Okay, class, now we're talking on bone and skeletal tissues. Bone and skeletal tissues. So that's where we are now. Let me come over here to this side here. So we're speaking of bone. What we have as humans is what we call an endoskeleton support for the body. Our skeleton is inside. This good eating guy right here has an exoskeleton. No, nothing inside, but this support outside. So we have an endoskeleton. This is the exoskeleton, this crab here. All right, I go here next. Now, you probably say, what in the heck is he doing here with this? All right, I want to talk about the advantages of fiberglass. And then I'm going to analogize that to bone. That's where I'm going with this. All right, this is this lovely Corvette Stingray body here. It's made of fiberglass. Prior to me going to med school, I worked, because I finished my master's and I had a few months between my master's at Stephen F. Austin and med school at University of Texas in San Antonio. So I decided to get a job. I had my, my master's and I had a lot of chemistry hours, so I worked at Dow Chemical in Freeport. And at Dow Chemical, I was assigned to work on the plastic, the resin, the liquid resin, which you make plastic out of, that would be used in the Corvette Stingray. Dow did not sell it to Chevrolet. Actually, they sold it to something called General Tire at the time. You know how corporations work. And General Tire would work on the body for the Corvette. All right. But anyway, to make a long story short, uh, while working there and, and uh, dealing with fiberglass, fiberglass was made up of a resin with shredded glass inside, and then it would be pressed hard. Now, Let's think on that. What are the advantages of fiberglass? You know, the Corvette likes to go fast. You can't easily crush it. Now, you could crush it easier than you could, let's say, metal, good, strong metal, but fiberglass doesn't crush that easily. And if you do crush it, that glass up in there doesn't, like it, just doesn't, let it, doesn't allow it to split into a bunch of pieces. You can't pull it apart. That's tensile strength because that glass up in there, okay? So the compression strength, though, let's come here. The compression strength is due to the hardness. The hardness is due to the plastic, okay? The tensile strength is due to the shredded glass up in there, the shredded glass. Okay, and the the main advantage why not using a metal is it's very lightweight, so the car can go quite quickly. All right, so when we come to the components of fiberglass, you have this shredded glass here, and arranged in a multi-directional of the glass in the plastic resin. So you put the glass down, then the Plat, then the, the liquid plastic resin is poured over it and you compress it. Okay? So that's what you're looking at. All right? So when I come here, fiberglass is a common type of fiber reinforced plastic. The fibers may be randomly arranged in multi directions and flattened into a sheet. And the matrix would be this polymer, this epoxy. Okay? Now, how do I compare and contrast that to bone? Okay, I just want you to think about it. We need some strong substance to support us, but we also are mobile creatures. We move against gravity. So we need something strong but lightweight. We need something strong but lightweight. And bone is strong, and I'm going to show you as we go through the anatomy of bone why it is also fairly lightweight for its strength, for its strength. Okay, so I want you to think of fiberglass when you think of bone. Fiberglass is lightweight. You can't pull it apart. It has tensile strength due to the shredded glass, and it has compression strength due to the fact of that hard plastic resin. So kind of keep that in your head as we think about this bone. Okay, and we'll come to it. So let's go over here now. Okay. 
So the skeletal system has about 206 different bones in it, okay? You have, so in the system, we have organs. Bone is an organ. Then we have cartilage. Remember I said I would talk about cartilage in the bone chapter. We have tendons, and a tendon attaches muscle to bone. A ligament attaches one bone to, a, to another bone, and then we have joint structures, okay? All right. The function of the skeletal system, one is to support the endoskeletal framework of the body. The other is movement. Now, see, we have a lever system. Muscle moves the bone. Muscle moves the bone. But we need a hard, rigid substance to move with. Protection. Okay, we got this skeleton that closes over and protects the brain, the spinal cord, inside organ. Storage. What are we storing in bone? Calcium and phosphorus. Bone, we're going to find, is our depository for calcium and phosphorus. It's a bank. It's a bank. And I want you to keep that in mind when we start talking about how to withdraw from that bank and how to deposit in that bank. So it's a bank for calcium and phosphorus. And it's an enclosure because inside the bone is your blood-forming organs. And we'll talk a lot about that in ANP2 when we talk about blood. Okay, so we go a little further. The qualities of bone we just talked about. Bone has tensile strength. It's hard to pull it apart. It has hardness, compression strength. It, it also has a certain degree of elasticity. The elasticity of the bone has to do with the water content. Bone does have some water. That elasticity, which allows you to get to, to fall and not necessarily always break a bone. See, as the person gets older, they lose a lot of that water. That's why the bones are more brittle. So tensile strength, compression strength, some elasticity, and it is fairly lightweight on many levels as we talk about it. Okay, so that's the qualities of bone. Now we come to the composition of bone, just like I did for the fiberglass. Okay. First thing you want to understand, which I've mentioned before, bone is a connective tissue. It's a connective tissue. It's a hard connective tissue. Now, if you go back to chapter four, what I said was on connective tissue. Connective tissue should have cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance. Go back and look at that to review your knowledge. Cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance. Okay? That's what a connective tissue should have. All right, now think about this. Your dermis is a connective tissue. Your dermis is a connective tissue. But it is soft. But the dermis does have cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance. The dermis does have cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance. But it's soft. It's a connective tissue. Bone, however, is hard. So the point I want you to understand is bone has two matrices. Bone has two matrices. One matrix is the same kind that the dermis would have. That's the organic matrix. The organic matrix would be made up of these cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance, organic living substances. But bone also has superimposed on top of that. Superimposed on top of that are inorganic matrix. And the inorganic matrix is the calcified matrix. The inorganic matrix is the calcified matrix. It's that inorganic matrix that gives the bone its hardness. The organic matrix gives it its tensile strength because of the fibers, the collagen. So the organic matrix gives it its tensile strength because of the fibers, and the inorganic matrix, which is the calcified matrix, gives it its hardness. So bone has two matrices, two matrices. Now, the organic matrix is about 20% with water, inorganic about 37%, okay, with water, okay. Dry weight, if I took all the water out, then the inorganic matrix would be about 65%. That's the hardness part. And the organic, which is the tensile strength with the cells, fibers, would be 35%.
So see water. So if you if you do a a, a dry weight, which means no water, because bone does have quite a bit of water, and like I say, it diminishes as you age. So this approximately forty three percent water content would diminish as the person ages, which would make the bones more brittle. Okay. Okay. The organic matrix again is comp is comprised of the, the bone cells the bone fibers, and the amorphous ground substance. And something else I'm going to add, these special glycoproteins. Okay. In a histological special, osteoid is the unmineralized bone. So if you say osteoid, you're speaking of the, the, the organic matrix. If you say osteoid, you're speaking of the unmineralized bone, osteoid. Okay. So we have bone cells, fibers, and amorphous ground substance. Here now is a picture of the bone cells. Now, recall this is the osteogenic cell, which you call the osteoprogenitor cell. That's the stem cell. Now, bone is connective tissue, so it came from mesoderm. So mesoderm could change to mesenchyme. Then mesenchyme could change to the stem cell for bone, which would be an osteogenic cell, or also called an osteoprogenitor cell. The osteoprogenitor cell, being a stem cell, then could differentiate into an osteoblast. The osteoblast cell is the cell responsible for secreting the organic matrix. You cannot secrete the inorganic. You su the way bone works, you secrete the organic matrix, and the inorganic matrix precipitates on top of it, rains out on top which is the calcified. We'll talk about that. So the osteoblast secretes the organic matrix, the fibrous and amorphous ground substance. It also secretes these special glycoproteins that cause calcium to rain out on top of it. Then we come to the osteocyte. The osteocyte is a resting osteoblast. So the osteocyte can go back to the blast. See how fat it is? has a lot of Golgi and so forth, because it's secreting. Go back, chapter 3, secreting. But when it rests for a while, and we'll talk about that, it goes in this skinny form. It loses some of its organelles and just rests. But it can go back to this when it needs to start secreting again. Then we got a, we've got a cell that needs to eat bone. Well, why do you say when it needs to eat bone? Well, one reason is to remodel the bone. Keep it nice and smooth. The other, remember, bone is a depository for calcium and phosphorus. So if we need calcium and phosphorus in our circulation, we need to dissolve some of our bone. We need to withdraw the calcium and phosphorus. So this osteoclast is a advanced macrophage. See, not all macrophages can eat bone because they don't have the enzymes to dissolve the inorganic matrix. See, not every cell has those enzymes to dissolve the calcified matrix. So the osteoclast is capable of doing that. So the four types of cells, again, that we have is the osteoprogenitor, osteoblast, osteocyte, and the osteoclast, and the osteoclast. Okay? So that kind of gives you an idea of that. Here's the osteoprogenitor, stem cell. Osteoblast, which is the parenchymal cell, most important, because that's the one secreting the fibrous, amorphous ground substance and glycoproteins. The osteocyte, again, is a resting, temporarily resting, and then the osteoclast, a special macrophage to do that. And again, those are the pictures there. Okay. So we will now close here, and we'll start right there at osteoprogenitor cells again.